Okay, hello everyone. So um, thank you for the intro. Um, this work has been done by my former master's student, so I'm just here presenting it because he works now in a company and he can't come. Um, so this is about a uh, comparison of different template-based code generation tools, and we look at it from an expressiveness and a performance point of view. So um, knowing the SLE community, uh, code generation can be interpreted in different ways. Um, traditionally, comes from the compiler's world where we translate source code to some uh, uh, bytecode, some executable uh, uh, code that is uh, understandable by the machine per se. Um, what we talk about here on code generation is higher level descriptions that are translated to source code, okay? Or to some textual uh, uh, artifact at the, at the end. So whether it's uh, models or just higher level uh, languages. Code generation per se in, in this context is uh, very, uh, uh, is at the core of, of MDE. Uh, different uh, uh, books and different uh, literature actually mention that very thoroughly. So um, we will see that there is a strong influence from the MDE community um, as well in, in, in this work. There are various types of code generation techniques and the one we're going to focus on is the template based code generation technique. Others, there have been uh, other comparisons with others, but none have been done for template-based code generation. So what do we mean by template-based code generation? Well, um, in a, there's a, the, the central part is that there is a template that the user has to define, and a template has basically a, a static part, which is text fragments that will appear in the, in the text as is, and it will have a dynamic part um, that will be computed, it's basically metacode that is, allows us to access the input so that it computes something and um, um, uh, uh, prints it out um, in, the, in the output. So in template-based cogeneration, the, the typical architecture is that you have, you define your template um, and uh, this template basically accesses or uses and basically the, the, the metacodes rely on some kind of design time input if you're in the modeling world, this would be the meta model. If you're in a, a, a in, uh, if you're in a XML world, this would be the XML schema. You know, the, the, this kind of uh, design time input that we talk about. Um, and basically, the template engine takes as input the template and some runtime input, whether it's a model or it's Java objects, and will output the corresponding text that uh, um, corresponds to the template. So uh, uh, in previous work, uh, we have done a, a literature review on template-based code generation. Uh, the article can be found in, in archive, but it's also in a revision in, a, in a Comlan as a, in, in a journal paper. Um, and so uh, we found from this literature review um, that it is uh, quite a popular technique with, with about, on average, a minimum of 30 uh, uh, articles uh, per year that use template-based code generation. Um, it is mostly used in MDE uh, since the early 2000s. Um, and there are different styles of te template styles, and the one we're going to focus on is the most popular one according to, our, uh, uh, according to the literature, which is output-based, basically where the, the, the template looks like the output but with metacodes inside. Um, and what's interesting here is that uh, from that uh, uh, review, from that literature review, um, we found that there were over 80 tools that were reported to be used there. Um, and these are the uh, top uh, ones that have at least, that have been used in at least five papers. So we were thinking after this literature review, we thought, okay, can we somehow evaluate these tools, these different tools on something common? So um, we found uh, the, 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 the problematic is that given that there are so many different template-based code generation tools, um, it is a difficult choice to choose which one is the most appropriate for my problem as a, from a developer point of view. But also there are no available metrics that we know of to be able to evaluate these different tools, the templates, and the template languages themselves. So. Um, 
what we propose in, in this paper is a, is a comparison of, the, of these tools based on what we will call typical meta model patterns that influence the way we implement the templates. Um, and so we'll have a qualitative evaluation of the expressiveness of the nine most reported uh, uh, tools, and we will also evaluate the uh, performance. So that's basically the, the outline there. So, so the tools we consider are um, the following. Basically, they span different technologies. They, they are all output-based, uh, but they span uh, different paradigms. Uh, the ones on the left are mostly MDE-based, and the ones on the right are mostly code-based. Um, they also use different platforms, whether it's uh, Java, uh, Visual Paradigm, uh, Visual Studio, JavaScript, etc. Um, so these are the, the, the top tools we, we found. Uh, there, so the way we um, so to to perform this uh, evaluation, we as I said, we identified different patterns, actually four patterns um, that are uh, specific to the meta model uh, that drive how the implementation of the uh, of the template uh, will be done. So uh, from there, we we basically looked at different repositories that exist for uh, uh, meta models and for as well as code generation projects. Um, so there are also some in the literature um, and also some from industrial projects. So the the guidelines to find to identify and come up with the uh, with these patterns. Um, basically, we wanted a minimal list rather than a complete list, okay, because we can just keep on adding these patterns. Um, and that can be used as basis for comparison. Okay, so we actually had more, but we had to remove some because there was no way of, uh, so all tools will, will have the same result. So, and we wanted something that distinguishes the different uh, uh, tools. So um, the running example is, uh, is uh, basically a, a language for, um, Invoicing, right, where we get some input model or Java objects in memory um, that represent some kind of invoice with, uh, with uh, items that have name, price, uh, some metadata on the invoice, and as well as a category that uh, is used to define whether it, uh, what, what is the amount of discount that you get depending on what category uh, this invoice is. Okay. Uh, you might ask yourself, why is the output here not code? Because it's code generation. It, it turns out that it's exactly the same techniques, whether you output text or you output code, there's no difference. Okay, It's just what you do after it that, that has an influence on the template. Um, so the, the first uh, uh, pattern is what we call the navigation pattern. Um, there, basically, from a context object, uh, we want to be able to navigate to a target object um, and so you can have, uh, typically you will use some kind of dot operator uh, to access uh, a, a target object. So if you're in the context of the invoice to access the metadata, you typically use some kind of dot operator. Um, some other tools will use, for example, in XSLT, will use a, an XPath uh, um, statement to be able to query and, and go find that. Um, what is interesting is that there is a, a variant where if it's a pure, if it's a composition, a containment relationship, or a reference, there is a difference. Um, for example, in XSLT, you have to, because uh, it's an XML document and it's all containment, if you want to have a reference, so then you have, to, it, you have to do some kind of manipulations and go find the ID and things like that. So it, uh, it gets a bit more messy uh, with uh, uh, templates that look like XSLT. The second one is uh, variable dependency. So in this case, we want to output a value that is not explicitly represented in the input, but that is computed, that is derived. Okay, so you, you need to compute, for example, um, the total of the invoice. Okay, so the total is not is not present here, but it's basically the sum of the prices in that case. You know, some some simple uh, operation. And so you see here that you need to. Um, um, you need to loop over the, the items and then get the, the subtotal and accumulate the subtotal to be able to do that. So in the, um, if we compare the different tools, so you have uh, languages such as Axileo that have a built-in computation language. 
so in case of Axelio, it looks like a bit OCL, uh, where you can just do uh, the whole the whole uh, invoice dot items and then arrow sum, and then you will get it automatically. Um, some other tools do not have this power. Um, so, for example, XSLT will have even more powerful uh, uh, computation that can be done. Some other tools have to rely on some global variable that then you need to that you will reuse, and so you have to define it in your, in the scope of the template. And uh, there are other other cate another category of different tools where you cannot do that natively, and you have to rely on an external program um, to be able to do that computation. The third one is uh, polymorphism pattern. So uh, in this case, we want to reuse a template for the subtypes in order to avoid um, code duplication. So for example, if I want to do something on uh, items or on price item, I don't want to, re to rewrite a whole part of the, of the template for both um, because it should somehow inherit, right? The template should be able to, to find um, that out. So in this case, if we look at uh, Epsilon EGL, well, um, they're actually, they, they, they score best on this one, um, where you have um, for each item, so for the, for the super class, here you will define the, 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 your template, and then for the subclass, it will automatically apply the ones of the super class, and basically you define the difference here um, with what is there. Um, so for the um, for the uh, uh, for the different tools, well, some of them were, uh, force you to write uh, a super type, uh, the, the template for the super type, even though it will never be used, and uh, some even have to, you have to rely on downcasting in order to be able to, to do such a thing. And uh, finally, the, the, the last one is uh, recursion, the recursion pattern. In this case, um, we want to apply, to traverse a recursive association in a recursive way, um, so the best way to, to uh, explain it is with the example here where I want to get the category here um, that is in this part of the model that is recursively there, uh, but the invoice points to one and I want to find which one, what is the level, the depth level. So the way to be able to do that is typically with some kind of recursion of recursive call uh, where you can call uh, the same template block basically. So the only tools that support it are these and all the others uh, don't support it. So to uh, summarize a bit the, uh, the expressiveness comparison, basically we see that most of the model-based tools um, are ha from, uh, from the point of view of these patterns, um, they do cover, uh, they have a better coverage from an expressiveness point of view than the code-based um, tools. And so uh, rather quickly for the performance evaluation, um, so I won't spend too much time on how we, we uh, did the setup, but basically we had a wide range of different uh, models uh, with different uh, uh, parameters that were able to vary the number of instances of each pattern. And we looked at the gen code generation time excluding uh, this guy O. So we have two experiments, one without recursion for all the tools and one with recursion uh, for the four tools. And so um, for the uh, performance results of the first experiment, what we see here, they're ordered in, uh, this is the order uh, of, the, of, the, of the last one here. So um, mostly if we look at the rear end, these are model-based tools. They perform less, uh, uh, not as fast as the uh, code-based tools. Um, some tools actually are uh, quite good, for example, uh, JET and T4 uh, for smaller models are actually uh, constant time. Um, this is because they use a trick where you, uh, at the moment you save the file, it actually generates the output. So there are nice, ni nice tricks that they use um, for that, but then at the, the moment you get to larger models, then it, it uh, it does take more time. Um, and if we look at uh, recursion, then um, it, it, it's the same trend, right? Um, but here in this case, extend would beat uh, um, the rest, but it's the same order uh, as the other one. So the recursion does not have an influence on the performance. So um, to conclude, um, so we've, um, 
basically identified different uh, patterns based on the meta model of how to implement the templates. Based on that, um, we evaluated uh, the, the expressiveness and we found that model-based tools provide the, be the better expressiveness uh, natively in that sense, in the templates and the template language. Um, Code-based tools are, in, on the other hand, most performant and if we had to choose one that uh, offers the best compromise between all, uh, it would be Extend that uh, has the, the better trade-off uh, when we did further, um, further tests. And so, for future work, what we would like to do, investigate more comparison criteria and metrics, for example, to come up with benchmarks for such uh, code generation tools. So that's it, thank you. <laughs>